please be aware that there are major spoilers ahead. If you have not finished the game, please do. I do not want to ruin your experience of the game. With that being said, let's get into it. The Forgotten Temple is lore-packed, complex, and one of the most mysterious places in the Zelda series. Tears of the Kingdom builds on the already existing lore from Breath of the Wild, presenting more history and meaning behind the sacred location. The secret stones held within empower the sages and Link to face the Demon King. Why was this place built? How does this location help us understand the overall story? And what is this mysterious symbol on the door behind the goddess statue? I'm Moxie, and this is Heavy Speculation. I'd like to take a moment and thank Leroyan Historian for his translations and insights used throughout this video. And as always, if you like Zelda lore, remember to subscribe to the channel. It's free, and it helps a ton. So, a few months back I took a deep dive into the Forgotten Temple, and I wanted to return to this location to compare my theories with the results presented in Tears of the Kingdom. Visiting any one of the Three Springs reveals a quest. Devout swordsman who offers his prayers, hear my plea. I can no longer sense the presence of the Mother Goddess statue which dwells in the vast canyon. I would ask you to go to that land and bring tidings to me of the Mother Goddess statue. Please. Please. If Link visits the oldest and largest goddess statue, then he will find that she's fallen. If Link returns to the spring that he started the quest, then they ask Link to offer specifically a claw from the corresponding dragon of the spring. This leaves us with a lot of questions on the matter. The most important of them, who or what toppled the goddess statue? So, in my last theory about the Forgotten Temple, linked in the description, there were many conclusions that I came to. 1. The Forgotten Temple was buried. 2. The Mother Goddess statue was moved to the Forgotten Temple from the sealed grounds. This would have taken place around the Era of Chaos, before the Temple of Time was constructed. 3. The presence of updrafts suggested that there were large caves below this place which well, do I even need to say it? 4. The Guardians were placed there to protect the facility, and I refuse to believe that they would be placed there to protect some comfy pants that Link receives after finishing all the shrines. 5. If the Forgotten Temple was the old Temple Time, it would have been connected to Lineru Mining Facility. And 6. Mommy Hylia in the Forgotten Temple with the Goddess Sword. Let's explore each of these ideas. The Forgotten Temple was buried. The Forgotten Temple has structural support to hold an immense amount of weight. Everything from the corbels acting as structural pillars to the string courses supports this argument. The mommy statue was moved here later, but I asserted that this place would have been built during or right after the Sky Era. This is neither confirmed nor denied, but it gets clear from the memories that it has essentially existed since the founding of Hyrule. Heaps of large amounts of dirt lay on both sides of the canyon with little to no foliage. The canyon extends all the way from Garuda Highlands to Tabantha Tundra. It stops at the Forgotten Temple. The canyon was tied so closely to the royal family during development that was called Valley of the Royal Family. My argument for this entire structure being under the earth was based on page 366 of Creating a Champion. These excavations King Rome ordered to uncover the ancient relics, looking for anything that would help in the upcoming calamity. Hindsight being 2020, I'd put my money on the royal family looking for the secret stones. There's a hole in the back of this room that was likely blown open later when this place was excavated. The hole was blown open when they realized that the temple clearly extended. It is actually not there in the cutscenes in the past. If whoever uncovered this place would have gotten one layer further, they would have reached the secret stones. Or at least the chamber 
depending on how you see the timeline. Raru, Zelda, and the sages go to the Forgotten Temple after Sonia is killed, and Ganondorf becomes the Demon King, using Sonia's secret stone. There are boxes and crates and many soldiers just kind of hanging out around the temple doors. They are, presumably, hiding from the Demon King. It makes sense that this would take place in an underground secret bunker. Raru and Zelda did just kind of beam out of there. Which, who knew the Puripad could take multiple people with them? Going to some secret underground bunker would be optimal. However, to take one from Draken's book, no confirm, no deny. So the next part of my theory was that the goddess statue had to have moved to the Ferran Temple. The goddess statue has rubble behind and around it, which I felt like was indicative of the goddess statue moving. Lucky for me, I was right. This is verifiable merely based on the vast distance between the mother goddess statue and the Skyview Spring, which is later named a Spring of Power. But the mother goddess statue is not present in these or any other cutscenes that take place here. So it was moved, but this begs the question, where was it moved from? And I also happen to be right about the Temple of Time moving because there is literally a piece of the Temple of Time that moved to the sky. The back of the chamber was gone, which was moved to the sky. And instead of obtaining the Master Sword, the story pulls a 180 and sends the Master Sword back instead. However, that part of the Temple of Time is still present in the ground. This also appears to be the same place that the Temple of Time in the sky was originally placed. This implies that the sealed grounds is likely the Great Plateau the birthplace of Hyrule. This was not always a plateau though, it was once a castle. One of the things I found interesting is a detail that we may have all conveniently forgotten from Ocarina of Time. The walls of Castle Town somewhat resemble the walls of the Great Plateau. All over the Great Plateau there are these arches and walls, which all look to be way older than other structures found in Hyrule made by these Hylians. Not the Zonai, because they were godlike engineers and builders. No, these are kind of like Mod Podge together and look incredibly primitive. So while journeying deep into the history of Japan, I learned a few things. One of the things I learned from an awesome YouTube channel called Lymphamy, which will be linked in the description below, was that Shinto and Buddhism did not always go hand in hand. In fact, there was once a time that Buddhism was looked at as negatively by the imperial royal family. Emperor Kanmu moved the capital from Nara to Haiyan Kyo, partly to escape the powerful clutches of Buddhist temples around the capital. And what happens to be at the Great Plateau? Well, there's the bargainer that seems to be in the entrance to the Great Plateau and directly below it. Good. Evil. That's the futile perspective of narrow-minded beings. There is no such distinction in wandering spirits. Is also a very Buddhist message. See, when there was a problem with an evil spirit, usually a Buddhist monk was called to help guide the soul to the afterlife. That is, once Buddhism was legal. Understanding some of Japan's history helps us see the frame in which the Japanese view the world and base their legends from. You see, the imperial family's claim relied on one specific document, the Nihon Shoki, which claimed the imperial family had lineage from Amaterasu, the sun goddess. So the bargainer may pose some threat to Hylia's power and her plan to continuously reincarnate. I'm still exploring and trying to understand the history about how Buddhism was and still is viewed. I plan to circle back around to all these ideas in a follow-up episode whenever I understand it better. Anyway, the Guardians were placed in the Forgotten Temple to protect something more important than Link's comfy pants. Turns out, the Guardians were placed here to protect the Secret Stones. That seems like a pretty good reason to have them here. Then the matter comes down to when the Guardians were placed there and why. And I'm not sure of either of those things. 
If the Forgotten Temple was the old Temple of Time, then Linnea Remining Facility would be right next to it. The short answer is, I was wrong. Lanayru Refinery is on the other side of the map. The Construct Factory is in Faron. But let's consider this from another angle, shall we? Long, long ago, and longer than that, a god fell from the heavens, and the winds of Hebra ceased. With the winds ceased, the heavens stagnated, and with the heavens stagnated, the land fell into ruin. We were fighting against a natural disaster. The gods seemed to observe the sky hopelessly, and everyone rallied together to help them. Mysterious ships that float in the sky. We will build it, launch it, and float it into the sky. The god was returned to the sky, and in thanks they gifted us this great ship. The winds were restored, and both heaven and earth were appeased. Everything from the color to the design of the ship reminds me of the sand ship and the shipyard from Skyward Sword. These huge blocks that litter Hebra look like different pieces of the shipyard with these cute little eyes and the triangle patterned bands that wrap these squares. Consider the shipyard may have been moved to the sky. This could have been how large amounts of zonite were moved between the ground and the sky because not everyone has a magical Sheikah Slate to store items within. I'm sure this point can be refuted many ways, but the one detail that is undeniable is that both the shipyard and the sand ship have to do with ships. Imagine. Which is what is absolutely dominating the Hebrew sky in Tears of the Kingdom. The ocean did supposedly exist due to the presence of rock salt being found almost everywhere throughout Hyrule, and Link's boomerang from the Wind Waker is found within the Heber mine. This could mean that all the northern part of Hyrule's map was at one time an ocean. If not, the idea of the shipyard being floated to the sky is not as drastic as it may seem. This region already had ancient technology littered through it. Over time, it may have drifted from Lanayru to Hebra. However, the ancient Stormark disagrees with this assessment. No, the Rito built these ships and floated them to the sky. Where would the Rito get the designs and schematics for ships like this? They were supposedly helping a god. The god they referred to is Kamisama, which means one god. So it's difficult to distinguish what is meant by Kamisama. This may be the result of a single zonai falling from the sky. Just one little guy falls off a sky platform. Another problem with the term Kamisama is that it may have been passed down over centuries by word of mouth because, like Drake and Wiles so brilliantly points out in her analysis of the Rito, they have very little written records and an elder to memorize all the old tales passed down by the Rito. Signs do point to some kind of alliance with the Zonai because, well, there are Zonai parts within the storm arc. I'll leave it up to you to decide what fits your headcanon. And I look forward to reading your thoughts on this below. Okay. And last, Mommy Hylia in the Forgotten Temple with the Goddess Sword. And I was right. This is the theory I'm the most proud of. When I was making the theory about the Forgotten Temple, Charlie really didn't love the theory and suggested cutting it. I stuck to my guns because the idea about the Goddess Sword was what forced me to examine the Forgotten Temple in the first place. I asserted that it would be possible to obtain the Goddess Sword from the Mother Goddess statue. <laughs> and if Link goes to the springs and offers the claws from Farosh, Dinral, and Nehru, and returns to the Forgotten Temple, the Mother Goddess statue is restored. In addition, she will bestow upon Link the White Sword of the Sky, or the Heavenly White Blade Sword, or in other words, the Goddess White Sword. The same sword Link is given at the beginning of his adventures in Skyward Sword. 
This is significant because it makes my dumb mean that I posted about the video correct. She has a stash of them. I'm not even kidding, if Link breaks the goddess sword, he can simply go back and request another one from the goddess statue. I know, I'm a genius. Okay, so what about all the new stuff? All the way in the back of this temple is the map room. This marks all the locations where the memories can be found. I can't help but wonder what else this room might have been used for. Assuming the room was here during the events that took place in the past, it must have been used for something. Most of the map is made out of stone representing the land, and sand is representing the water. The castle doesn't look like it was made at the same time as the rest of the map. It looks like it is made of copper. These tiles on top mark the locations of the geoglyphs found throughout Hyrule, which came from Zelda's dragon form. Each of these tiles was likely placed here after the events of the past. There are areas that appear to be on water on this map, and are not water in Hyrule. Namely, this tear shape from around Lookout Landing extending down throughout Hyrule Field. The River of the Dead appears to have been land, and the water actually extended around the Colosseum and into the Dig Dog Suspension Bridge area. The Dueling Peaks appears to have been one mountain, and Tanagar Canyon appears to have the same level as Gerudo Desert on the map. This appears to be the Zonai War Room. These sky people have these two competing characteristics, being peaceful engineers and being warlike. Clearly, they made weapons in the past since the forge is present in the sky. All the weapons and the armor couldn't have only been made for Link. There must have been other reasons. One of the things that fascinates me is the barbarian armor from Breath of the Wild, and it's also available in Tears of the Kingdom. The armor describes the people who favored this armor as warlike. But all things considered, this appears to be something of a replica to me at least. Imagine you were a caveman living in the ancient past. Then you saw these futuristic people climbing out of holes and flying into the sky. Wouldn't you try to be like them? Everything the Zonai have is made out of copper and Zonite, so it would be fair to conclude that the armor does not belong to the Zonai. Perhaps this may be Bokoblin armor, or maybe it was some kind of second scion race that adopted all the Zonai techniques and culture and appreciated the culture so much that they kind of borrowed it. They just moved in and filled this place up, slapped some mud over the top and call it their own. But let's look at the other side of this equation. Parts of the architecture are breaking off, revealing the underlying architecture that looks like something other than Zonai architecture found in the sky above and the depths below. I'm not entirely sure what to make of the barbarian armor. Looking at the barbarian armor aesthetic against the vast majority of Zonai ruins on the surface and the sky makes you wonder, is the smooth marble stone underneath like every single one? Or just the things around Tabia's hollow? Maybe it was a way of the Zonai making themselves hide their magical properties and make the people think that they were more primitive, then they are better to hide their secrets and the stones. If you are looking for an advanced race and you find these ruins, your first thought wouldn't be lasers, robots, fans, flying objects. You would think wall, base painting, stonework, torches, and crazy rituals. So someone finding these primitive ruins in search of the secret stones instead of the original runes would stop right there and not search much further. They were looking for an advanced group of people and not a primitive tribe after all. The armor's war paint seems to be the magical ingredient here. That was left to make the finders think that painting themselves was their magic and that this is nothing special and not worth further investigations. 
The armor is described as a traditional armor that bolsters the fighting spirit, drawing out the wearer's inner animal. The peoples who favored this armor were an ancient warlike tribe, further separating them from magic. But with the introduction of yet another mysterious race that lives in the depths, it definitely presents more questions than answers. The last thing I'd like to address is the door sealing this room. On the door is this very peculiar symbol. For some reason, it looked very familiar, and I didn't know why. A preliminary Google search didn't reveal anything, so I moved on. YouTube recommended a video about the Spherote. The Spherote is known generally in the West as the Tree of Life, and is a map of consciousness used in Kabbalistic Judaism. This is viewed by some as the structure of a spiritual vessel and the structure of reality itself. While this does belong to what could be considered the more mystical side of Judaism, it is considered to be very sacred by many people. This depiction used in the Temple of Time and within the Forgotten Temple does call into question whether or not Nintendo is, once again, guilty of cultural appropriation. According to IMDb, the chanting in the Fire Temple in the original version of the game was a Muslim chant in Arabic that translates to, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And this was removed because Nintendo did not want to offend Muslims who are quite familiar with the chant. So there is a question here. Is this cultural appropriation? There are cultures that encourage and enjoy sharing their culture. For instance, wearing kimono is something that is totally kosher with the Japanese community. I'm not really in the position to determine this myself, but I do live within a traditional Jewish community. I intend to investigate the subject by asking many different people if this is cultural appropriation and presenting the results to you. Returning to my first question, it is difficult to determine the culprit behind the toppling of the goddess statue. Perhaps it was the demon king with this newfound power. He went there and uprooted the statue. There are a few problems with this line of thought though. When Ganondorf falls from the platform, the chamber Link faces him in is relatively close by. The second issue is that no gloom is present within the temple. There's not a chasm below the statue, so it was probably not Ganondorf. Something tells me that it's mystical. Considering the bargainer was able to speak through the statue to Link, it would be fair to consider him a suspect. Anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I'll see you in the next one.